Hey, Spartan fans, welcome to the Milford Spartans Coaches Corner Show. This week, two for the price of one, two Coaches Corner Shows in the span of one shooting time period. We missed last week. We're getting ready for Milford's Pumpkin Festival, Columbus Holiday. What we missed, though, was unfortunately a three-point loss to the Sabres of Sauhegan High School. That was on October 4th. For their trouble, after that loss, Milford had to get ready for a road trip and head up to Conway to take on the undefeated Eagles of Kennett High School. However, if you like Spartan football, you had to like the result in Kennett. 42-21 was the result, 5-1 currently in Division II's South Conference. Now, Milford Spartans getting set to take on the Indians of Sanborn High School. And joining me tonight, head coach of the Milford Spartans, Keith Jones. Coach Jones, a couple of busy weeks. Very busy. You know, uh, you know, big rivalry week. And, um, you know, even though it was a home game, we didn't really get off the bus. And uh, <laughs> then we had to travel up to... Uh, the great north and uh, see the foliage and uh, it was nice we did get off the bus and uh, we played pretty well so let's take these in in, in order in which they came Sauhegan was a big rivalry game you had a, a festive night there a lot of people in the stands came back to watch the uh, 1984 team was introduced at halftime but yep. but you're not worried about 1984 you're playing in 2019 and um, Sauhegan came ready to play yes yeah, Sauhegan definitely came to play they came hungry uh, much more hungry than we were you know, I, I think, you know, sometimes you look back and sometimes a loss is good. Uh, this might be a, that might have been a good wake-up call for us to go back to reality and realize that, you know, nobody's afraid of big, bad Milford. Certainly not the Sabres. They always play you tough, right? Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, it's always a great game. So talk about that game a little bit more in depth, though. They came into the game with a throwing offense. They like to spread the ball around the field a little bit. They average about 200 yards passing. They just about 100 yards rushing. They kind yeah. of flipped the script on you, though, and they rushed the ball with Riley Lawhorn, 256 for the senior. Yeah, I mean, Riley had a great game, and uh, we did a very terrible job with our defensive fits. Um, and a lot of the, the motion and misdirection stuff they were giving us was causing a couple of our kids to start going the wrong direction, and they were capitalizing on it and making plays. And, you know, Riley was beating Gavin to the end zone. So, you know, <laughs> you know hey, hats off to them. They, they made the plays when it counted. Um, our kids didn't quit. We were in it at the end. But, um, you know, you can't give up 330 yards rushing and think you're going to win. Between uh, Riley Lawhorn and Gavin Erda, it looked like a track meet out there because both teams were moving the ball up and down the field at will. Frankly, if that game ran another three or four minutes, it looked like you had some momentum late and, and might have been able to get over the hump. You know, I think we were starting to figure it out a little bit, and, you know, certainly offensively, uh, we were starting to make, you know, some big plays and stuff. So, you know what? It wasn't three minutes to go, so, you know, we got what we got out of it, and uh, it was a good learning experience. Talk about a learning experience from Sauhegan's perspective. They start a lot of, of juniors on that team. They're already a load to handle now. Imagine what they're going to be like next year. Don't want to think about that right now, Kevin. <laughs> we'll deal with that next year. But talking about young players, now we're going to talk about Kennett. And one of your young players had a huge game for you. Sophomore Caden Zielinski ran the ball effectively for you at Kennett. Talk about getting off the bus and, and being ready to play. Nine carries, 140-something yards, a couple of touchdowns for the super soft, Caden Zielinski. First of all, thanks to the Yankee Smokehouse, because we stopped up there on the way up to <laughs> the game really? for brisket, ribs, chicken, and pulled pork. And uh, that, that the restaurant just did a tremendous job feeding the kids. And, you know, that was a big part of it. We, we got up there, and we didn't have bus legs because we... We took our time, we had our dinner, and you know, then we got up and walked around. It not the like, first time you've done a long nah, road trip with your team. No, not the first time I've done right. this with right. that North Conway. So, um, you know, it was great. You know, Caden did a great job, but I'll be honest with you, it was really a whole team effort. You know, we blocked well, we executed well. Defensively, we made all the calls. Um, and, you know, it just happened to be that Caden was the guy that, you know, got the ball and it was open. So you take on Kennett. They were 5-0 and going into that game, uh, tied for first place in the North Conference. You hang their first W on them. What does that tell you, if anything, about the North Conference this year? I mean, you know, it's still week in and week out. You just got to worry about who you play in this week. I'm not going to lie to you. Outside of Kennett, I haven't really thought about, about the North Conference because, you know, we don't have to worry about it until November again if we get there. Okay. So, you know, my, my worries right now are Sanborn High School, then Conval High School, then Alvern High School. One at a time, right, worry Coach? about the rest. One at a time. Uh, Liam Daly, your senior place kicker, had a nice game for you up, up at Kennett. Four for five, five for five on PAT. Five for five. Five for he five. made all his PATs. Had a couple of nice kickoffs, did a really nice job. Must, give, must feel good for you to have a, know that you have a little bit of depth at that position, too. you got a sophomore in 
Colin Gregg, who's been effective for you. But now the senior's coming on strong. He's too. actually only a junior, which is nice. Oh, Liam is only Liam's a junior. Liam's only a junior, and, uh, you know, and uh, Colin had a soccer game. Yeah. So he couldn't make the trip. So uh, when Colin hasn't been there, Liam has done a tremendous job, very confident, and gets it done. Excellent. Injury report coming off these two weeks. How's the health of the team, Coach? Uh, nothing right now. We're all good. Right Excellent. Now. Let's do a quick division, division two roundup. Starting in that North Conference, Bo remains undefeated. They're six and zero. They beat up on Merrimack Valley. Now the only undefeated team that remains in Division two is Bo. Four of their six wins have been in the North Conference against teams with losing records. So we'll talk more about the North Conference and and. Um, all of the teams top to bottom as you get there. Pembroke with, uh, won over John Stark. Plymouth all over Kingswood 47 to seven. They improved to four and two. Guilford Belmont evens its record at three and three with a win at Hanover. Here in the South Conference coach, Alvern over West 35 to nothing. They join you at five and one. Pelham 21-20 over Sauhegan. At Sauhegan, a one point win for, the Pel for Pelham. Hey, I keep telling everybody, Pelham's the real deal. You know, I mean, we, we didn't play our greatest game offensively against them, but, you know, defensively, they slapped us right in the mouth, you know, and... Um, going to be know, a tough out in the playoffs, I would think. Yep. Uh, Hollis Brookline dropped 50 on Sanborn, your next opponent. They go to four up and two down, and then Conval, your opponent in two weeks, blanked St. Thomas, blanked by St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, probably one of the toughest three and three teams in the state, the, uh, the St. Thomas Aquin uh, Aquinas Saints. Um, Coach, say your next opponent, Sanborn, the Indians of Sanborn Regional High School, have not had a winning season since 2014, winless a year ago, uh, winless, in uh, winless in 2019. They're averaging eight points per game. Uh, they're giving up 37 points per game. What is your message to your team going into the Sanborn week? You know, we, we know that Sanborn's struggling, and, and the kids can see it for themselves. So, you know, I don't have to lie to them about anything. But, you know, the one thing is is that you get used to you got to have the same preparation each week. You know, you know, Lou Holtz years ago, right? Every team, every week we're playing the best team in the country. doesn't matter if we're playing the Chelsea School of Upholstery <laughs> or we're playing Sanborn High School. We're going to prepare the same. Routine. 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 That is state championship winning head coach Keith Jones. I'm Kevin St. Ange. And want to thank you for joining us on the Coach's Corner. It is the Spartans taking on the I Indians of Sanborn Regional High School here in Milford, Friday, October 18th, 7 p.m. kickoff. The cameras of Granite Town Media will be there for all the action. And you can also see it on Facebook, Granite Town Media's broadcast, broadcast platforms. And you can get all that information on our Facebook page. And a program reminder, you can watch this Coach's Corner show and the Spartan Spotlight, a weekly focus on Spartan seniors as they tell their 2019 football story throughout the season on all of the platforms of Granite Town Media. On behalf of the Milford Football Booster Club, I'm Kevin St. On saying good night and go Spartans.